Congratulations, you passed the FE exam. But what now? You're watching FE exam prep with Anthony Fasano from Pass the FE exam. In this video, I'm going to explain all the steps that you'll need to take right after you pass your NCWS Fundamentals of Engineering or FE exam to make the most of your achievement. This information was taken from an article from PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975, who is also our sponsor for this episode. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. Whether taking the FE exam is behind you or right around the corner, let's discuss what happens after you pass the NCWS FE exam. Here is what you will need to do. You will need to send your transcript to the state board where you want the certification, and then wait until you receive your EIT certificate in the mail. Here are some things that we recommend that you do once you receive your EIT certificate. Place the credentials after your name wherever you can. For example, add EIT after your name on your LinkedIn profile. This is important because it shows potential employers that you are on track to receive your engineering license. That's what they want to know. Now, while it may be too early to start studying for the principles and practice of engineering or the PE exam, it's not too early to create an experience log and keep it up to date between now and when you take the PE exam, logging all of your work experience neatly and in order. This is critically important because when you go to apply for the PE exam, they will ask you for a list of all your experience, which must include all of the projects and tasks that you worked on and which professionals that you worked under. These professional engineers will need to sign the application for you. I'm telling you this because too many engineers that I talk to wait to prepare this list when they are applying for the exam. And at that point, they've forgotten all of the details of the projects that they worked on the past three or four years. Now, last but not least, you must gain engineering work experience as soon as possible. Get out there in the field and start working as soon as you can to build up your experience, which will help you to sit for the PE exam sooner in most US states. How soon can you take the PE exam after passing the FE exam? The simple answer is it varies by state. For the most part, EITs can take the PE exam once they've successfully passed the FE and have acquired four years of approved engineering experience. It's worth noting though that some states allow EITs to take the PE exam before accruing their four years of experience. The experience is still required, but it's not a prerequisite for the exam in the states where they have decoupled the exam from the experience requirement. Building an entry level resume. As I mentioned, even though you've passed the FE exam, which is a wonderful accomplishment, the PE exam requires that you have knowledge gained in engineering practice, four years of engineering practice to be exact, again, in most US states. Now, gaining the required engineering experience means that you'll need to put together a resume and get a job. But I know you're just starting out, so if you don't have a great deal of relevant work experience when you're applying for an engineering job, just be sure to emphasize the skills that you've used in other positions. Maybe your management skills, maybe you have public speaking experience, maybe you've gotten it from a school or a club or a project. Also be sure to include courses that are related to your engineering field. Now, here are some recommended items to incorporate into your entry level resume. Contact information, your full name, phone number, email address, and links to your professional website or LinkedIn profile. Objective statement, share your skills and goals to give employers more information on your background, your qualifications, and what you hope to accomplish. Skills, highlight your relevant skills to engineering, problem solving, equipment, software, knowledge, math skills, anything related to your job. 
Education. List your engineering education, including the coursework, extracurricular activities, and the name of each school. And be sure to include those senior projects. Experience. Remember to add volunteer work, internships, and work experience, including the duties and responsibilities of those positions. This is probably the most important thing on your resume. Certifications. List your engineering certifications as well as the name of the certifying institution, for example, EIT. Preparing for and passing the PE exam. Once you gain all of the necessary experience that you'll want to start preparing for the PE exam, be sure to contact your state engineering licensure board because most states require that applications be submitted well in advance. All of the PE exams are moving to computer-based testing and most will be CBT by the end of 2022. Just like for the FE exam, our sponsor PPI offers a series of test prep materials for the PE exam. So be sure to browse PPI's offerings and select the exam in the area that pertains to you. Congratulations and best of luck in the next steps of your engineering career. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will answer more of your FE exam questions and run through some more practice problems. Past the FE exam will publish videos weekly. So please be sure to click the subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below that I will read and respond to in future videos. Maybe there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover or a problem that you need solved. Pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week.